this is a simple program to add two numbers together. Um, so just a few variables. Enter the first number. We're gonna we're gonna put that in. Enter a second number, and then we're gonna add those together, um, and then output the sum. Um, and this works fine um, as long as the user behaves and gives us good input. So we'll we'll put in one and two, and of course um, right here we get the sum of three. Um, so that's fine. Uh, but let's run it again. And let's say we use a little bit bigger number, um, something like that, and we try to add one to it. So because we declared these as, as integers, there is a limit on the size. And because of the way the computer stores numbers, uh, we're going to get, uh, this is actually the maximum size for an integer, plus one. You see it kind of wraps around, uh, and so it goes to the, the most negative integer. Um, that we can do so it, you know plus one we don't expect from two billion something to get uh, a negative two billion by adding one so that's a problem um, and other odd things can happen when you get overflows or underflows with variables uh, so we want to check a few things or validate some of our input so to do that um, we're going to add um, another library so we're going to include uh, limits and then we're going to put in uh, so for the number one here we're going to put in uh, a check to make sure that when we check CN um, that it's a that's valid um, so that we'll do that before we check the sum um, so what that's for after we compile this and run this let's say we put in one more than the max so we've already overflowed, um, we're going to get an error uh, telling us, hey, that's that's not going to fit in there. So at least we get an error before anything um, kind of weird happens. So we need to do that for number one. We also need to do that uh, down here for number two. So we'll add that in. Um, we still have the problem of you can still um, get valid input for both of those so I can still put the max in I can still put um, one in I'm still gonna get an error on the end but I do need to check the sum after we've added that together that one's a little bit more complicated um, so what we're gonna do is we actually so we included uh, the limits because now we have, we can pull for this compiler what is the, the maximum integer size. And what we're going to compare is the two numbers. And so if number two is greater than zero, and we're adding uh, one to it, and one um, is greater than the maximum integer minus the two, uh, we're going to get an overflow. Um, so this and here we're just saving ourselves a little bit of nested uh, if statements uh, so that's a boolean and so this and this has to be true for this to become true and if it is we have an error uh, this is a boolean or or there's another possibility uh, so if number two is less than zero so it's a negative number uh, then we need to check the minimum so if number one is less than the minimum minus number two, we, we might uh, have a problem in the, in the other direction, so to speak. Uh, so if we do that, we're going to have an overflow detected, so we're just going to output that error. Uh, and then we probably need to put an else in here uh, to say uh, else. Um, you know, So either we're going to output the overflow if we detect it using this logic, uh, or we're going to output the sum. So let's, let's try this out and see how that works. So we'll, we'll put in, you know, the max number, and then we're going to overflow by one. So I'm going to put one in there. And this time, in, instead of uh, getting a weird number for the output, we detected the overflow. So we're going to say overflow error detected uh, and let the user know that with, with some output uh, and error uh, message in, instead of uh, giving them wrong uh, answers, so to speak. Um, so that's kind of a, you know, once you work through this, look at this part. Um, and that will give you uh, a 
a way to detect overflow errors once you add 